Today on Hands On Photography, I am trying my best to stay cool in this here Northern California heat. No, seriously. I am sitting down with a photographer that's going to talk about their very first paid gig as a photographer. I got to tell you, this is an experience um, that shouldn't be overlooked. There's a lot of lessons that we can all learn as photographers and I'm looking forward to sitting down and talking with them and I'm looking forward to it inspiring you, the hands-on photography listener. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by Nomad. Go to nomadgoods.com slash twit and use promo code twit for 10% off your first purchase of any Nomad accessory. They have Apple Watch straps, wireless chargers, ultra durable cables, and more. Limited time offer. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands on Photography, my beloved podcast here on Twit TV. Hope all of y'all are doing well. Look here, I am unbelievable as always, just sitting here on a fine, excruciatingly hot day <laughs> here in Northern California. So if you see me sort of wipe my brow here and there, do not be surprised. Uh, but yeah, this is the show where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And every now and then I get the opportunity to sit down with another photographer, professional photographer, uh, or even heck, I've had a graphic designer on here, graphic artist on here, because it all sort of goes hand in hand. And that's what we're going to do today. I have a guest joining me. But before we bring my guest on, I want to welcome all of the folks that are brand new checking out the show. Welcome to you. Thank you for popping in. Go ahead and subscribe right now, whatever podcast app you're using. I know some of you folks love that Apple podcast. So just go ahead and subscribe in it because all y'all got iPhones anyway. So just go ahead and subscribe while you're there. And also while you're there, go ahead and leave a rating and a comment and says, you know what? This show is so daggum good. I'm going to be back to listen next week. All of that stuff helps me out. So check us out there on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We even have a YouTube channel. But if you're trying to find all of the subscription options, just go to the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. And you'll also see all of the previous episodes and the show notes for all of those episodes. Now, with that out of the way, let me wipe the sweat off my brow one more time. And I'm going to introduce today's guest. Now, this cat, yes, I called him a cat because we go way back, quite actually. Uh, my man, Mr. John Davis, is someone I met him mm, it's got to be pushing close to a decade at this point. <laughs> it's been several years. But back in the days, I used to run a smartphone photographer's community on that platform known as Google+. And lo and behold, you know, I was able to meet a bunch of different people. And John was in that group as well. He was a great community member. And it was fun just watching everybody get into photography with their phones and work at getting better and see how people were getting better at this craft. And of course, um, things sort of fade away. I ended up shutting down the community, but I stayed in touch with a handful of the folks. And Mr. John is one of those cats that I continue to stay in touch with because he's just an all out good dude. I, I seriously say that in all sincerity. He's an all out good dude. So without me just babbling along, let me go ahead and bring him on the screen. My man, Mr. John Davis. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How you doing today? Man, I'm unbelievable. It is so daggum good to see you. It's been a while, my man. Yes, it has. <laughs> it is very hot in the Midwest today. <laughs> and that's right. So you're up in like the Chicago area, right? Yeah, I'm about an hour north of Chicago. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm, and it's always hot a, there. <laughs> yeah. I'm about a, I'm an hour between Chicago and, and about 45 minutes south of Milwaukee. So I'm I got like two big cities I can go to. Oh, man. I love Milwaukee. All oh, the cheese. Oh, gosh. I love <laughs> yes. Milwaukee. Man. Well, my man, look, I'm, I'm, I reached out to you because we had been talking, uh, I guess it was a couple of weeks back, and you were saying, hey, I got a gig coming up. And as far as I know, that that's probably your first paid photography gig, right? Uh, yeah. Besides, uh, getting paid by some friends. Yes. All right. So yeah. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. So 
I said, man, this, this, this is, this is good. I'm happy for you. That means things are getting, you know, you're getting some more recognition and, and people starting to notice your skills and just, time to take that next step. And that's getting a client to say, Hey, I want to trust you with my images. So let's, let's do this thing. Um, right. For real. I'm, I was so happy to see that. And, and, and I've been watching your photography, you know, because you've gone beyond just using your phone. You also use a uh, Canon R I believe, right? That's correct. Yeah. So you, you know, your tech and you know, your, your way around the good camera body and a good lens. And it's just been nice to watch that. But now that you've been able to just get that extra recognition, tell me, tell me about your experience of, okay, this potential client saw my stuff and was like, huh, he might be the perfect fit for shooting my event. How did that all come about? And tell us what this event was, if you don't mind. Um, uh, a friend of mine from church no, knew somebody at this nonprofit, nonprofit called Chicago Scholars. Mm-hmm. So uh, she asked if, if she could refer me. And I was like, sure. So after about a week or so, I get a text from a young lady there. And we were going, we were uh, texting back and forth. We talked a couple of times on the phone. Uh-huh. And she was interested. Um, and she wanted me to give her a number. So, okay. And then that's when I kind of reached out to you to kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't minute. know where to start Hold with on. the number. Wait a minute. That sounds funny. She wanted to give you a, <laughs> give a number. What? what she's, huh? The phone number? What? Oh, she's talking money. Money. Ah, right. Ah, okay. Okay. And so that's when you reached out to me. Yeah. Well, she, you know, she gave me all the particulars, six hours, about 55 students, maybe one or two headshots. Mm-hmm. Ten, for, um pretending on what the price is so when i gave Mm -hmm. her the price she she went back to her people a couple days later she she said okay let's do this Mm -hmm. nice now we're not going to get into the particulars of how much you you bill them or invoice them but i do think it it should be discussed because what you went through is something all photographers go through when they're starting out they know their work has value but they're not quite sure what the value is of their work and there's Correct. a lot of other, other variables that are involved. What was some of the things that that popped into your head when it came down to trying to figure out what your rate should be? Um, I was thinking about the drive there. So it's an hour drive. <laughs> Wait, hold up. An hour drive? Do you know how much gas costs these days, dude? Hey. <laughs> Well, it's an, it's an hour drive because of Chicago, Chicago traffic. Oh, okay. So, All right. All right. Yeah. So that's a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no traffic, it'd be about 30 minutes, but traffic, you're going to add another half an hour. Oh, wow. Good yeah. grief. Good grief. So you consider traffic. What else that popped in your head? Um, six hours. So I was, I was booked for six hours, three hours on two different times. Mm-hmm. Um, six hours. And then how many headshots? And then um, all the equipment I need to bring. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure that out as well. Okay. So, and then some of the equipment I didn't have. So this gig is it actually is going to pay for some of the gig, some of the stuff that I could use in ah, later shoots. Nice. Nice. So you, you pretty much, you, that's a situation where I guess it ends up being a little bit of a loss on that particular right, at, gig, at but it's an investment. Right. So you, you'll take that loss now because it's going to make that next gig even easier because you already got the equipment or you don't have to worry about renting it. Right. Correct. So what was some of the equipment that, that came into place? You know, I know you have the, the Canon R, but what else did you have to get? Uh, I needed a flash, which I've never used. Oh, so that was fun. boy. Oh, that was boy. fun learning that. <laughs> uh, a trigger. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to actually borrow the backdrop for one of my friends, he's a professional videographer. So okay. he had a black backdrop and a white one. And he gave me both when I picked it up. So mm-hmm. I had my choice. I nice. pulled out the white one and wasn't, I wasn't feeling the white one. It looked a little dingy. So oh. I just used the black one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I probably that- could have made it work now that I, th- 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 that I know after the fact, I could probably could have pulled it off, but I used the black one. Well, it's nothing wrong with the black background. That's sort of a standard. It's usually like the standard is gray. That's the first thing, because the gray is always neutral. Okay. Um, and then then you get into the black and the white. You get into the black background 
for people that are wanting either a standard professional headshot or they're wanting a, a low key shot because they want it black and they want all the shadows and stuff like that. For those of you that haven't seen the episode before, I've already spoken about low key photography on the show before Mr. Victor will show that right now on the screen. Thank you very much. Um, but then you also have the white background that gets more into doing what they call high key photography because you want that solid white background and the lighting is totally different. You see that in a lot of product shots. You see that in a lot of like uh, fashion where it's makeup involved and things like that. You know, it's, it's so those, those things, the black backdrop and the white backdrop is two different monsters, if you will. But that, mm -hmm. that middle gray, yeah, that seems to be an easy standard to work with, especially when it's just just getting started. But you jumped into the deep end of the pool and went with the black. I jumped in very quickly, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> I love that. See, where I'm from, we call that jumping in the, jumping in the fire with gasoline draws on. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> so you got, your, you got your gear set up. You got your backdrop squared away. What was the actual shoot light when it came to dealing with the particular models as they came in to get their photos. Tell us a little about that. Well, the, um, well, this company is a nonprofit, nonprofit. So they help, um, kids from different neighborhoods in Chicago mm -hmm. to, to get them into college and then to help them after college. That's awesome. So they, so they kind of just trickled in as they were coming into the place. Mm -hmm. So, I have one here, then I might have a break for a little bit, then somebody else might walk in. So it wasn't really busy, busy. So I, I had time to look over the pictures after each after each picture to, just to see what I was doing and, wh and where I can change. And then I was also able to practice in between. Okay. I would put something on a table and try to light it up. Oh, okay. Th you know, th <laughs> to see how this looks. Oh, that's too dark. No, that's too bright. <laughs> All right, so I gotta set it here. So, so, so you were able to sit down and just sort of freely experiment in between sessions, and, and just yes. just sort of take take a look at how the light was reacting because you you just used the one flash, right? Yep, and because it was in a small room, I just bounced it off the ceiling. Smart. Um, they had windows to the left of me mm -hmm. that were bringing in, so I had the lady close those. She was like, "You really want those? To you really want to close those?" Like, yes, I do. <laughs> what what yes, made I you do. decide to do that? Um, I just felt like I wanted to control the the light that was coming onto them. Right. Right. So that's why I did that. All right. That's what I would have said too. <laughs> no, that's good stuff. So, all right, you got the models in, they're coming in and they see you with the camera. Um, they know that this man is here to take my photograph. What was it like? Was there any kind of interaction? Did you have to direct anybody, you know, to get them to pose a certain way? Were they just sort of like zombies walking in or were they energetic? What, what was that like? Some were zombies. Some were energetic. Um, some had a, a lot to say. One girl actually said she tried to do her own headshots with her cousin and didn't work out. Yeah. So she was grateful that the nonprofit were doing these for their students. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Cause sometimes you, you, you're running to a lot of different personalities in the middle of a shoot and people react differently to the camera. Um, yeah. you know, some people will totally tighten up and just won't let go. And then you have some that are absolute hams <laughs> and you can't yeah. get them to move on and say, Hey, I got right. other people to shoot, you know? Yeah. I had a few that wanted to see them directly after like, uh, can we take another one? I don't like that one. So I had a few of those. Yeah. I had some that didn't really want to do them, but you know, they, they wanted them to take them. Mm -hmm. So they just came in, click, click, click. And they were out the door. They didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many, how many snaps do you think you average per person? Um, well, I didn't have my trigger or the flash set properly. So I was shooting too fast. Okay. So I was getting a good shot and then I get a dark shot. I was like, Oh, I, Oh yeah. I, oh, I, I, because I gotta of the let it warm back time. up. Uh, yeah, the recycle time. Okay. Which I for, totally forgot about that. <laughs> when I go back, I'm like, oh, could you could you go back? Because that second picture is dark. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come back. Go stand over there one more time. Right. Oh gosh. Now, when that happened, did did, did they react oddly, or were they just sort of no, not just at all. Took it in stride. Yeah, they just took it in stride. Oh, okay. You want to take another one? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, they were they were. I had no complaints. 
Oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> but it happens like that. There's never yeah. is I don't know if there will ever be a perfect time on set. Things are just bound to happen, whether it be equipment failures or whether it be just some things that you're sort of learning on the fly. Um right. you know, for example, you the 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 space that you shot in, you knew you wanted to close that window. Did you have the opportunity to see the space before the shoot? You know, like I did not not, not on the so, same day. Just the, the day not. of is when you're the day of. Hand. They just walk me into this classroom. Yeah, boy, that's that's tough. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. Oh man, you know, for someone that doesn't have a lot of experience, that's that's quite a bit to ask because you really you know, got to understand the way light works. You got to understand that exposure triangle and know what happens when you change that shutter speed or what happens when you change that aperture and so on and so forth. What yeah. Are you saying? Oh, I was going to say, because I had thought I, I had that thought of asking them what it was going to look like, but I forgot to ask. Mm -hmm. I forgot to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And then the lady that was communicating with me, she she wound up having to stay home because she got sick on vacation. So man. I was basically I was basically just solo that day. Oh, man, this day. <laughs> <They laughs> this just is put not, me in the room, man. This is just sounding like the. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Boy, your your patience and skill was definitely being tested. Now, yeah. I I do want to get into some of the images you 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 sent some images to me and said that we could show them on the show. Sure. Um, I I do want to get into that, but before I get into that, I want to take a few moments to thank this week's sponsor, the fine folks at Nomad. Nomad has been. They, they've been around since about 2012. You know, they, they got together in Santa Barbara, California and started a Kickstarter project because they had a goal of building ultra rugged and minimalist tools for the 21st century that would seamlessly integrate into your everyday carry. OK, so y'all know what everyday carry is, right? That's your 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 watch and your phone and your wallet, you know, stuff you need every daggum day. They said, you know, what? we need to fix this. So in the past nine years, Nomad has expanded to offer a wide range of mobile accessories to fit any need from iPhone cases to Apple Watch straps, wireless chargers to premium wallet passport holders crafted with Horing leather. Nomad uses leather from a Horing tannery in Chicago over there where Mr. Davis is founded in 1905 and offers an unparalleled blend of quality and consistency. The leather accessories develop a rich patina with time. So they get this nice, pretty worn look just, Oh, just, and it just says, Hey, this is mine. Cause this is how I wore it, you know? And then it smells good. I love the smell of leather. Nomad offers convenient wireless charging solutions for the home, the office, the bedroom with the suite of chargers for whatever you have, whatever Apple device you have, quite frankly, whether it's an Apple watch or iPods, uh, AirPods, um, or just anything that has a, a charging port like your Android phone. That's what I use them for. Nomad is offering AC adapters for the folks that aren't, aren't on the Apple devices and they have the 30 watt and the 65 watt GAN adapters. The crew at Nomad was tired of dealing with those flimsy charging cables that seem to just fall apart every couple of months. So they set out to engineer some of the most rugged cables around. Now, these cables are reinforced with the double braided Kevlar outer sheath and the strong metal alloy connector housing. Nomad cables have been engineered to the extreme for durability and heavy everyday use. And they're also climate neutral certified. Nomad is and always will be a company that prioritizes design and quality over everything else. One of the most important aspects to Nomad when designing new products is they use the highest quality and, and long lasting materials that are available to them. So they design all of their concepts from the ground up rather than just white labeling something that already exists. Y'all yeah, know who those companies are. Again, I, I've spoken about them before. My my little wonderful niece, little weirdo, y'all know who she is. She saw that I had a Nomad um, Apple Watch uh, Apple Watch strap for, her, and she absolutely loves it because it looks so cool and it feels good on her wrist. And she's always showing it off to her little smart alecky teenage friends because <laughs> that's what they do. Now look, y'all go to nomadgoods.com/twit and use 
promo code TWIT for 10% off your first purchase of any Nomad accessory. That's nomadgoods.com slash TWIT with the promo code TWIT. And this is a limited time offer. Thank you, Nomad, for your support of the show. And thank you all for checking out Nomad. All right. So I want to get the images up on the screen here. So what I'm going to do is hit this button here and hopefully <laughs> it's going to switch over and show you the images. Uh, we have the first one to pull up here in the group. And it's this young man here. I'm not going to look at all of them. We just want to take a look at maybe two of them here. But I want to check this one out first and have you talk through this image and your experience with it. This is your standard. Looks like, a again, a professional business headshot. But let's uh, let's talk through it. All right. So this is my the first person. So the, so he was basically my test dummy. And I told him that he was cool with it. I, was, uh, I said, uh, you're going to be my test dummy as I get this <laughs> flash going. And so we took about 10 or 15 shots and he was fine with that. OK. Yeah, I was playing with the flash. Um, so with doing this again, you were saying you were shooting with the flash bouncing off the ceiling. Yes. OK. Did you have any kind of did you have any other light modifiers at your disposal? Um, like a soft box or anything? I brought it, but I didn't use it. Okay. Cause uh, quite frankly, looking at this image, I don't think you need a modifier because the lighting is soft on them. It, 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 it looks good in my opinion. Yeah. So my only mistake at there, I got through a few people and then I was able to reach out to you during a couple of intermissions is I had them too close to the backdrop. So because of that, the backdrop didn't look dark. It looked gray. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of work in post-processing for, <laughs> for sure. The, the surface, the surface pin was my friend. Oh, so you painted in the, the black background. I did. Ah, I, I, nice. <laughs> yeah. Cause I tried to go, I was trying to go as black as I could, but then it was, it didn't, didn't look right. So I, I didn't force it. And then I just went back and, and then I just did the color in. Okay. Now I'm going to offer some feedback. Do you want some feedback from me on this one? Oh, I have no problem with that. All right. So looking at this, we have the black background and if we can see with my mouse here, we have dark hair. So if, if you were to look at this, his head just sort of disappears right there because of the black background. So what you may have wanted to consider is yeah, you want that black, that black background, but you don't want it that black to where he just sort of blends in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, here, let's just switch to my actual screen here. Okay. So right now I'm, I'm sitting in front of a black backdrop right there, but I make this one change. All right. And that's basically, I had a light that's hitting the back of my head, a rim light, a hair light, because with that light, that light off, you see my face and my head just sort of blends in back there and I just sort of disappear. But having that additional light, whoop, not that one, <laughs> having that additional <laughs> light, it separates me from the back, you know, so it, it doesn't look like I'm pressed in to the wall, pressed into the backdrop, similar to how he sort of looks pressed in there. But if that black wasn't as dark, maybe it would maybe it would work a little bit better. But that's the right. first thing that I saw. But you had already addressed the fact that, you know what, man, I had him way too close to this wall anyway. Right. Yes. Right. But I, I, I love what you did with the with the bounce again, because the light is really, really soft on his face and it's flattering to him. It's not giving him these weird um, raccoon shadows or anything like that. So I, I give you your props. On that thank one, you, my man. Thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then there's this other image down here that I wanted to address and just get your thoughts. And that is this one. Let me hear your thoughts on it. Uh, he was very happy. So, <laughs> yeah. So he. I wonder why. <laughs> so this was the guy that that he was really into his picture. Like I, after I took the the couple of them. He wanted to check him out. He said, "Oh no, I want to take some more." <laughs> I, and then, and, and then he picked the ones he wanted. Mm -hmm. He was the, he was the only one that picked his own pictures. Everybody else is like, "Okay, thanks for taking the picture." <laughs> this guy was into it. He wanted 
he wanted what he wanted. Now, how did that make you feel at that time? I mean, I was fine with that. I mean, he 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 wanted to look a certain way, as you can tell. Mm-hmm. It looks like he takes care of himself and he likes his his his, his uh his dress. Yeah. yeah he looks so, sharp. He he yeah. looks good. He looks sharp. There is something that that stands out in this shot versus your first one because he's clearly stepped away from the background. I could tell. Yes. You know? And because yeah, and because of that, it was more easier to do the background. <laughs> right. It, it was so much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, he's clearly stepped away because you could see that there is a little bit of just a little bit of light that got bounced down as it wrapped around his face to his shoulder. And then this his uh, left shoulder here, which is sort of angled forward, is clearly catching the light. So he this is I think that's a much better job there. Um, but just don't make it too black in the background or where they blend in. But this is, this is, this looks really good, man. Good pose. This, this, this man's energy is just mm, like, I'm proud. Look at mm-hmm. me. You snap this camera, dad gum and I look good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Right. He was making sure he, he looked good. <laughs> <laughs> this is outstanding. Outstanding. But yeah, this, I, I'm, I'm so happy for you, brother. This, this is, these images look really, really good here. Um, you know, this one looks good. Just great pose. The lighting is good. The little see how his hair is lit up right there. He's not blending into it. Just no, oh, just good stuff, man. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, and his hair was really dark, so I I really I put a little sh- uh, extra shadow on his. Oh, I got you so to, it, to bring so it, it up some. Like, yeah, <clears throat> cr- right. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so the this the guy with the with the green and black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, it didn't come out that great. As you can see, his hair was, just, he yeah, was too see, close as well. Yep, see, he you blended can, in. Still, yeah, and you can see the backdrop. Mm-hmm. He blended in, he blended yeah. in. Good pose, yep, but he blended in. But that's the thing, this has been a good learning experience for you, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> And I'll be ready when that when I come back again. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. That's what we yeah, want to hear. Yeah. So they were happy though, and um, they booked me for the next session. So I'm going to take the rest of the pictures in uh, the July 22nd, I believe. So, so you got rebooked? Well, it was supposed to be two sessions. Okay. All so right. when I sent those, I was worried because I didn't hear them for a couple of days. Uh huh. I was like, oh, did I do a terrible job? And she came back. <laughs> oh, we loved them. So, yeah, we want you to come back. And oh, then good. Good, last, good, good. Yeah, so I heard from her last week, and she gave me three dates. Okay. So, now, with that said, it's a good thing that you they're happy. You're 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 happy, but you're not satisfied, and I I totally respect that. That's that's a good mindset to have. Um, but with all of that said. What are your thoughts on this? Do you have any like lesson learned type of things? Um, you know, is this something that you that you picked up from this session that you're going to take to your next session? Oh, definitely. I'll definitely uh, have them farther away from the background. Um, I still need to practice more with the flash. Uh huh. That that was my first time, so I need <laughs> to do some more practice. With right. That. Well, I have I have a tutorial about using that flash. I'm sure you know that by now. Yes, I do. <laughs> now, um, from a business standpoint, um, any lessons learned there? Is it things that you considered for the next gig? Not necessarily the session with this client, but the next potential client. What are some of the things that are sticking out in your head that you you're saying? You know what? I need to make sure I address this. I address that. Um, and you know, is there documentation contracts things like that that you have to consider oh most definitely yeah because with this being my first professional shoot basically i had to learn you know about the contract you know writing up a nice contract which i did and they accepted it um knowing what gear to bring which thank you thanks to you that was a big help (laughs) and um you know uh I probably would like to know the venue next time so yeah. I can know so so I know what to bring. Yeah. I said it cuz I might not have brought everything that I that I brought cuz I didn't need everything that I brought. Right. That was a lot of stuff I brought. <laughs> right. Right. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I, and, and this is some of the lessons that I learned over the years of first is, all right, establish, get yourself established, which you've already done. They, they were, somebody recognized your work. So you're, you're doing something right there. And then after you get that agreement to say, Hey, I, I would love to work with you, get something in writing on a contract, you know, let the expectations be <clears throat> for lack of better terms in black and white. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that contract is going to save you a lot of headache <laughs> in, in the end, because I, I promise you, brother, not all clients are as smooth as this client. <laughs> they're, 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 just not, they're just not. So well, it's not, it's not over yet. So we'll see. All right. So when I, when I spoke with you, I, I said, Hey, so what's your contract <laughs> say? <laughs> let, <laughs> let them know what you're going to do. So everybody knows what the final expectations are, you know, and, and a lot of people get, get a little discouraged when they hear the term contract far as the, the beginning photographer, they get a little discouraged far as contract, but it, it, it doesn't have to be a bunch of legal jargon. It, it's just gotta be straightforward. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to provide. And this is when I'm going to provide it. And this is how much it's going to cost. Do you agree or do you disagree? If you can start with just keeping it as simple as that, it's going to help you in the long run. And then down the road, yeah, sure, you can get into, you know, you know, talking about revisions and things like that or talking about additional billing and, and things like that. Because sometimes um, you'll have that that shoot like you did and end up getting called to do some additional shoots outside of the session. You know, oh, so and so wasn't able to show up. Can you come back out? Sure, I can come back out, but I got to charge you for that. You know, and that's the kind of things that you can sort of put in as like little riders, if you will, on the contract. But that's for later on down the road. Um, and then the next thing is just understanding what to charge for your images. Uh, when you're starting out, I tell people don't expect to get rich on that first gig. You just right. That's just wrong. You're not that good. It's your first gig. You haven't earned the right to really get rich on your very first gig. You haven't earned the right to get rich on your first 10 gigs. In my, in my opinion, you still got a lot to do. Um, so understand that, you know, you can't go out there and, and put a price tag on there that someone like Peter Hurley <laughs> or Rick Salmon is putting on the invoice, you know, um, right. cause your prices are going to change as your experience changes. Um, I've had negotiations with, with potential clients that end up being clients where I send them their est I send them their estimate and it has a number on there that they just sort of woo, you know, they 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 freak out a little bit and they want to come back and tell me, hey, that that's too much. And my justification is, well, it costs that much because I've spent X amount of hours and years being able to get to the point to where I can provide you that service in the amount of time with the amount of quality that that I'm going to promise you. Um, so I, I'm not going to give you a lot of wiggle room on that. But again, I've been doing this for a while. I don't expect you to do that on your first gig. You right, know? right. So I, I hope people will, you know, just, just sort of own up to the fact that, yes, their, their art has value, but you still need to do a little bit of a crawl before you walk. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so, Mr. John... This has been fun. Is there anything you'd like to share with the hands-on photography community? Like where can we find your work online and some of your other musings and things like that? Um, sure. I mean, I do have an Instagram account. Um, it's JWD visuals, <laughs> JWD visuals. Uh, I don't have a website at the moment cause I didn't, I wasn't at that point where I thought I needed one, but uh -huh. I will be working on one. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right, so I can build, so I can build my portfolio. That's right. That's right. Well, I'll go ahead and say this: they they are a sponsor of the Twit Network, and that's hover.com. So if you need a domain, go to hover.com/twit. Please and thank you. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> brother, hey, thanks so much for joining me. I am so glad to have you on and be able to share your experience because I've been getting some questions about people wanting to start the business of photography. You know, I did an episode. Was it last week or week before? I don't remember. I think it was episode 132. 
where I talked about selling your photos as prints. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I haven't that, watched it yet, but I, I did. I did see that. That's that's like one of the easiest things to do as a photographer is just 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 shoot your stuff and put it out there available as prints. And if people want to buy them, they'll buy them. If they don't, that's fine. They're still out there. You you have some options. And then when you're ready to dive more into bigger projects, then let's go ahead and start talking about the process of of getting people interested in your work and sitting down and, and chatting with them and going through the details of the gig and and start setting the price and start shooting and start sending those invoices and getting those invoices coming back with no amount due, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. <laughs> I think we can all do it. It's just going to take some work. All right. Correct. <laughs> all right, brothers. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, 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 I hope to have you back on here in the future. Hey, where, where let you me can know talk anytime. About, hey, these are the things I've learned and, and this is what I've done. You know, maybe like a year later, we spoke with John and this is what he was doing last year. And now he's got this and oh my gosh, he's just blowing up. I, I hope we can do that in the future. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> All right, brother. I appreciate your time. Good, good seeing you and uh, stay cool. Uh, you yeah, turn on your right. AC now. <laughs> no, not even going to happen. Not even going to happen. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode. My man, John, was just just outstanding. I really do appreciate him hanging out with me today and sharing the story. Um, I hope it inspires you all to, to, you know, to get out there and take that chance. And, you know, it's your, your art. It's your work. You know, um, there's value in it. Everybody's art has some value in it. So, yeah, just uh, let's let's get out here and, and start this little bit of entrepreneurship, if you will. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to shoot an email to the show. That's hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I love hearing from you folks. I get quite a few messages from you, and it's just great. It really is. And if you have some images um, that you want me to critique, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to critique your images and, and give you some pointers here and there if you want them. Um, if you're cool with your images being shared on the show, make sure you mention that in the email, okay? Because I don't want to share these things out without your permission. And uh, But yeah, just keep sending them on, sending them on in, hop at twit. Dot TV. I still haven't figured out a photography challenge for us just yet. Uh, I need to think on it some more, but it's coming. Just just stick around. We'll, we'll get to that eventually. I want to send a shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week. And brother, you were just unbelievable <laughs> on the edit job with the animation episode, episode 133. Thank you so much, my man. <laughs> hey, folks, do me one more favor. First, Follow me on social media. Head on over to Instagram right now and follow Ant underscore Pruitt. Just search for Ant Pruitt. You'll see my bald headed face on there. And then I'm the only one. At least I hope I'm the only one. Give me a follow. Tag me in some of your favorite images that you've shot. I love hearing from you over on the social media platform as well. And also go ahead and share the show out with other folks that are, you know, curious about photography. So share it out with all of your friends and share it out with at least one enemy if you don't mind. All right. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you all so much. And we will see you all next time. So safely create and dominate. Y'all take care. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows. Plus, membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.